Hello, and welcome to the joy of appropriate instrument handling. My name is Dr. Alex Fox Alvarez. I'm one of the soft tissue surgeons here at the University of Florida. And I'm going to go over just some very basic walk before you run instrument handling techniques to kind of put it in your mind now so you guys start to develop good habits while you're dissecting an anatomy and any other opportunities you have to use these fine surgical instruments. So let's get started. This guy is your thumb forcep. There's a lot of different kinds. We'll teach you that later in your curriculum, but it's a thumb forcep. For all intents and purposes, this thing should just be an extension of your thumb and forefinger, usually of your non-dominant hand, okay? And so you're gonna hold it as such. You should hold it with a pencil grip, okay? Your uh, inclination is usually to do an overhand grip as though you were an entomologist grabbing a bug or a jeweler moving precious fine stones, but you're not, you're moving tissues and you need much more dexterity and control. And you've developed your whole life being able to write and handle things in this way. So you remember, hopefully, after this long diatribe about such a silly thing, to hold this like a pencil and not to do this overhand grip. Get used to it. it takes a little bit of time. So you guys have these at home now. Pick stuff up, mess around, play with things. Get used to these as being your new thumb and index finger. And this is a needle driver. This is the instrument that we use to handle and drive the needle through tissues. It looks similar to a hemostat, which is a, an instrument you guys probably already know the name of, but it is different and we'll teach you later why. But this is where it ratchets. So all these instruments will ratchet lock so that you can keep the needle securely in the jaws of your instrument, which you'll want to do when you have your needle in there. So that's one thing. The other is not to use these fingers. Oftentimes, you, growing up, you may cut with your scissors using your pointer finger and your thumb finger. Not anymore. You've got to put a ring on it. So ring finger, thumb finger. Okay, it's also called your tripod grip because this is where your fingers will end up. So the reason that this is superior than this is that you don't have much control here. You're going to be all shaky and wobbly, whereas... If you have your ring finger in there, you have more of your hand that can help control the instrument. So you, typically your middle finger gets right here in the corner where your handle ring meets the rest of your handle. And then your pointer finger goes up towards the tip of the instrument to help give you improved control and stability when you're moving around and manipulating things, okay? So you wanna be able to move smoothly. This is much harder to move smoothly. <laughs> than having this, you know, in more more of your actual hand, okay? So, you'll have to get used to that as well. you also have to get used to opening and closing this. So, this is a good thing to just sit on the couch watching TV or something. Close it, open it. Close it, open it. So, you close it just by closing it, and you can see it clicking in there. And when you open it, I'm going to have to push my thumb that direction, and my other finger is going to hold this steady so that I can push open those jaws. Click, 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 push. Click, 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 push. Like that. Now, lefties will have more trouble. Unfortunately, lefties, they do make left-handed instruments, but they are expensive. And most hospitals will just have righty stuff. And so you can totally get left-handed stuff. And I empower you to do that. However, most lefties, by the time they're able to get their own left-handed instruments, have just figured out how to use these instruments with their left hand. And it's really not that hard. And just do the opposite. So if I'm going to use my left hand for this, then my thumb is going to pull this way. So I'm kind of pulling this way. This finger is stabilizing the bottom ring. Boom, I do the same thing. So for lefties, it's more of a pull. For righties, it's more of a push. Other than that, it's not so bad. So. This is your normal setup of what you would have if you were gonna suture, drive needle. Your left hand, you have your instrument represented by just thumb and forefinger, that's pretty much all you need in this pencil grip. And then you have your ring finger and thumb grip here, your tripod grip, okay? And so this is, this is, your, this is it now, these are your hands. 
All right, so it takes a little bit of time to get used to this, so it's good to practice early, but you guys are gonna have some other time to practice and more targeted uh, teaching about this in your curriculum. But do wanna show you how to, how to load a needle. Okay, so here's your needle. All right, it's swaged on, which means that the suture goes directly into the metal and then is crimped. So there's no eyelid on it like you would see in you know a sewing needle, for example. And that's to help, it helps decrease resistance and drag, less tissue trauma that way. And then this, of course, is the tip, right? And it's sharp by design. So you gotta be careful. You don't want glove punctures, okay? This is why we don't, we try not to handle the needle that way if we can help it. And so you never wanna grab the tip of the needle or the swage part, because you don't wanna damage either of those, because those are kind of very important bits of the needle and the suture working together. So the other thing that you'll wanna do is grasp this about one third of the way away from the swage, okay? So something like this, okay? That distance. So you want your needle to be perpendicular to your instrument, like that, you see? Okay? So you don't want it to be like this or like that. You need it to be perpendicular. The other thing you want to do is make sure that you're using just the tip of your instrument. Okay, it should be out, out here on the tip of your instrument. It helps improve your control and your working length. If you're way in here, you know, it's a lot harder to kind of get where you need to get to a tissue. You're going to be banging into stuff. So you want to increase the working length there and go just on the tip of your instrument. Last few teeth or so and make sure you're perpendicular. And then about last third of the needle. And then you're ready to ready to go. And so when you're using these for suturing, you got your left hand pencil grip or non-dominant hand pencil grip. And you've got your dominant hand with your needle driver with ring finger and thumb. And then middle finger is gonna rest right here in kind of that corner. And then your pointer finger can help you kind of guide where you need to go. So you've got your needle inside of your instrument, about a third of the way away from this end here, two thirds from there. It gives you enough room to put tissue on this needle as you kind of pass it through the body layers. And um, you're also right on the tip of your instrument and perpendicular to your instrument. Okay, so with my non-dominant hand, I'm going to lift up the tissue that I would like to, so we're gonna assume this is skin here the tissue that I would like to suture. So I'll pick that up. And you gotta remember, this is living tissue you're picking up. So you don't wanna crush it, okay? You wanna gently pick it up. You wanna use the least amount of force necessary, okay? Least amount of force necessary to really achieve whatever it is that you wanna do. So you gotta be very smooth about things. All right, so I'll lift up the tissue that I want. And then my needle, ideally, is gonna start perpendicular you know, I'm gonna point straight down into that tissue so the tip's going straight down. And then as soon as it starts to poke in, I'm gonna start rotating my wrist. Okay, so you can see that there. So this is where you don't want to go run and grab this. This is where you can injure yourself, okay? Because it's stabilized over here. You need to grab this with your thumb forcep. And then you can either re-grab it, you can either pull out with your thumb forcep or re-grab it with your needle driver since it's a bit of a more secure hold and then pull through. And then your needle driver can help support the skin or tissue as you pull through. Now, this is where I feel like it's appropriate if you need to make fine adjustments, you can use your fingers, but make sure that you don't poke needle and you're very careful. So I want that again, the tip at 90 degrees, right where I want it. And I'm gonna come straight across, make sure that you lock your box lock. So that means even if I took this out, the needle is still secure, that's why those these locks, the ratchets there, okay? So again, I got my ring and thumb, finger, grip. I'm gonna pick up the tissue immediately across from it and I'm gonna stab essentially 90 degrees but it's coming up from the bottom, okay? So I'm still stabbing directly into that tissue, straight into it. So, you know, if I could peel the skin back for you to see, I'm coming into it just, you know, straight into it like that. But when it's pulled up that way, I'm stabbing into it like that, okay? And then once I poke through with my needle, I'm gonna grab this with my 
thumb forcep. Like, you know, remember to use your hands. You don't have to be one, don't be a one-handed surgeon if you can help it. So my right hand right now can help my left hand. It doesn't have to just pull. It can help by, oh, all right, I'll help hold the tissue back there for you, friend. Yeah, teamwork. Okay, so now you're ready to tie your first knot. And we will teach you guys way more detailed about knot tying later in your curriculum. But to give you an idea, the needle driver is also used for that. And so you will pull the suture all the way through so that your tag's not crazy long and so that you guys can preserve your suture and uh, keep practicing, okay? And then you're going to make a square knot. So to make a square knot, your instrument has to stay between these two strands, okay, the whole time. So you don't want to come outside and make loops or anything like that. I know that sounds weird, but just pay attention to that and you'll, you'll throw square throws. Square throws are a very nice and secure knot. Granny knots can come slipped. So that's how patients can bleed after surgery. So you want to keep your instrument between these two strands. So you loop it around one time and then you grab the end and then lock it and you pull it through and switch directions of your hands. So now your left hand goes away, the right hand comes towards you. And then I'll open my instrument and I'll do the same. So remember, come between this suture and that suture, between them. You don't wanna come out here from the back side and do that, that's not. That's gonna throw a granny. You wanna stay between the two always. So I'm between the two. And that's how you throw a square knot, stay between the two, okay? So I'll show you again from this angle, it's always gonna stay between the two strands there switch sides with my hands, wrap again, I'm still between these two, pull it down. So I'm saying between these two, meaning I don't want you to come behind this to make a wrap and then get it because that's going to make a granny throw. Okay, so you always want to make sure that you're just between those two when you're doing those. Okay, and then the last kind of neat thing to learn for some basic instrumentation is these are the scissors that we use to cut sutures, some people call them suture scissors, some people call them OR scissors. I wouldn't recommend touching the sharp bits like I am now, you don't need to do that. But you'll see that it has a sharp side and a, a more blunt side, okay? And that the blunt side is thicker than the sharp side kind of comes to a point. So if you want a long tag, uniformly long tag, let's so say like for skin, you'll put your scissor, same grip, okay? ring finger, thumb, and you'll say, all right, I want a long tag. So you get your scissors like you're going to cut, you rotate, and then your tag is going to be as, as long as this is wide, which is good for skin sutures, okay? That's how you can control the length of that. So, um, you know, the back of my blade's kind of at the knot level, and then I'm going to have a nice tags when I cut it that, that's that short. So normally I would cut both tags, but um, I want to show you the way to make a short tag is to do the opposite. So I flip it. So rather than having the thicker side down, I flip it in my hand so that the thin side is down, come over the scissor, and then I slide until it's the length that I want. If I want a shorty, then I just go all the way to the end there. And when I cut that, it's going to be short. So you can see the difference between these tags. Okay, this was my short tag that I used the narrow side for this is my long tag. So when you need to make a long tag, go over, rotate, cut it for the long side. When you need to make a short tag, you can rotate, put the skinny side down and slide until you know you got what you want. Those are the big basic things. And so I would say, don't forget your pencil grip. This is the thing that we see you guys most often forgetting and doing this because for whatever reason, it's something similar to what you've done. But you can imagine if you were trying this, my elbow's up in the air, it's uncomfortable, my shoulder's tired, versus this is much more controlled, okay? You should be kind of standing at the OR like a T-Rex with your elbows in, straight, tall, back, you know? You don't want to develop bad habits now that are gonna cause you, um, you know, undue strain and, and injury. And the other thing is to remember to use your ring finger and thumb, okay? It's called a tripod grip. Um, you may hear of some surgeons palming, okay? And so what, what we call palming these days is typically our thenar grip, okay? So rather than having fingers in the holes there, 
we hold it in our palm and our pinky kind of holds this in every our fingers kind of hold this in as they need and then we use the thenar eminence which is kind of this thick part of our thumb here to push open the box lock okay so you're going you're holding this study with the fingers guitar fingers and then my thenar eminence i'm just going boop to pop that open and we do that because it's a little bit more efficient close it like you know same way so this is something you can practice on the couch too if you really are interested in surgery you know practicing that thenar opening and closing okay so when that just speeds us up a little bit okay well that was the joy of appropriate instrument handling and i hope that you enjoyed yourself uh, I encourage you to practice at home. You can suture all sorts of stuff. The models that you have, you can order a model online if you'd like, like one of these from Amazon. They're pretty cheap. I think Surgery Club may have some as well. Um, or you can suture things like banana skin, um, citrus skin. There's all sorts of things you can practice with. So go for it and enjoy. Develop those good habits early. It's very important.